Now let's consider some special cases of L'Hopital's rule. Recall, L'Hopital's rule says, I want to take a limit, x goes to c, of f over g. f and g are nice enough functions. What comes out is going to be a 0 over 0. That means we need to do more work. L'Hopital's rule is going to give us a method for doing more work. What we do is, we're going to take f prime over g prime, take the limit as x goes to c. If that exists, or gives me a plus minus infinity, then that's going to be my answer for the original limit. So what we want to do now is look at some special cases where the 0 over the 0 or plus minus infinity over plus minus infinity is not obvious. So let's take a look. For my first case, this is going to be 0 times plus minus infinity. So the idea is going to be I'll have to decide by looking at the different pieces of the limit which thing should be switched down into the bottom or to the top to get the 0 over 0 or plus minus infinity over plus minus infinity. Okay, let's see the example. So I want to go to 0 from the right of x, natural log of x. Okay, the reason we have to go from the right is because if I just use natural log of x without the absolute value, the graph looks like this. So it's going to stop at 0, so there's nothing to check on the left. I put 0 into this. Well, for x, we put the 0 in and we get 0. For natural log of x, checking the graph, note as I come into 0 along x, what's happening to the y values? They're going to get smaller and smaller as we get closer to that vertical asymptote. So let's go into minus infinity. So this is going to be of the special case that I promised. What can I do? Well, the x that's up on top, I can move that into the bottom as 1 over x. Okay, if you don't like that, you can multiply, put this over 1, and then multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over x, and the 1 over x hits the x and they cancel. Okay, 6 and 1 half dozen the other. You decide what you like more. Now, when I take the limit of this thing, I put the 0 in. Well, this we already saw goes to minus infinity. This going from the right is going to go to plus infinity. So we're going to have a minus infinity over infinity, and then I can apply L'Hopital's rule to this situation here. So that's my f and that's my g. We didn't have an f and a g here, but I turned the x into my g. Okay, we apply L'Hopital, so I take the derivative of the top and the bottom. Derivative of the top is 1 over x. Derivative of the bottom, okay, well, that's x to the minus 1, so the minus 1 comes down. And we subtract 1 off the exponent, it gives me a minus 1 over x squared. We move, uh, multiply top and bottom by x squared. The top becomes an x, the bottom becomes a minus 1. And that gives me limit as x goes to 0 of minus x. 0 goes in, 0 comes out. So my answer is going to be 0. Okay, with these funny things here, we don't have a graph to check unless, you know, you go ahead and try to graph the thing. Probably you'd need this limit to get a good graph, though. So what I can do is, well, if I stick 0 in here, we're going to get the 0 times the plus minus infinity. What I could do instead is, is take a really, really small number and stick it in there and see where those keep winding up. So this is how you would take a limit if you were in the real world. You're not usually looking for precise numbers, you're just looking for really good approximations. So what happens? I'll take 0, 0, 0, 1 and stick it in for my x. When I do that and put that also into natural log, okay, so I put it in my calculator, and that's going to give me minus 0 0.00092. And for my, as far as I could tell, that's close enough to zero, so that I probably did this right. Now let's look at the case where we have 1 raised to the infinite power. Let's try the example limit x goes to zero from the right of 1 minus x raised to the 1 over sine x power. We put zero in, I'm going to get 1 minus zero, so I have a 1 there. Put zero into sine, I get sine of 0 is 0, so we're looking at 1 over 0. Since we're coming from the right, that's where sine is positive. So this goes to plus infinity. So this is certainly the case we're interested in. What's the trick? Well, for me, whenever I have something raised to the power, I never like to work in anything other than e as my base. So what I'm going to do is use our identity e to the natural log of box equals box. So I'm going to pretend 1 minus x is equal to box. So e to the natural log of 1 minus x 
is equal to 1 minus x. And that lets me turn this into something where we have base e. Why do I do this? Because it introduces natural log up on top. And because raising things to the e power, e to the u, is a continuous function, I can move the limit from down here to the, a limit up in the exponent. That's what continuity says. If you have a composition and a limit on the outside, you can shove that limit to the inside. Now, we might as well pull this down, figure this out on the side, get the answer, and then bring it back when we're done. So we take the limit as x goes to 0 from the right, natural log 1 minus x over sine of x. I put my zeros in. We get natural log of 1, which is 0. Sine of 0 is 0. So the Hopital's rule applies. I take the derivative of the top. That's just going to be take whatever is in parentheses, flip it over, then multiply by the derivative. So that gives me minus 1 over 1 minus x. Derivative of the bottom, derivative of the sine is going to be cosine. So I get this fraction here. I put 0 into this. On the top, we're just getting a 1 over 1 minus sine. So that's going to give me minus 1. And in the bottom, I get cosine of 0, which is 1. So the answer that comes out is a minus 1. Okay, note, this is just the exponent. So I go and I replace it back into my original expression. And our answer is going to be e to the minus 1. Now, that feels very unlikely, but again, I can appeal to the calculator. I'm going to put 0, 0, 0, 1 in to my original expression, and let's see what comes out. I'll wind up getting 0.99999 raised to the 10,000th power with a lot of decimals after it. Well, when this goes into the calculator, I wind up with 0.3679, and that's pretty close to 1 over e, so I'm pretty sure I didn't make a mistake here. For our next case, we're going to consider limits of the form 0 to the 0th power. For my example, we consider limit x going to 0 from the right of x raised to the x squared plus x power. So this is definitely 0 to the 0. We're going to use the same trick. It's going to be x. I don't like that as a base, so I'm going to replace it with e to the natural log of x. So that's going to give us this limit, and then by continuity of the function e to the u, I could push the limit up to the top. Now I can just deal with this limit on its own terms. If we notice, natural log of x, as I go to 0, is going to go down to minus infinity. We draw the graph. And then x squared plus x goes to 0. So this is one of our 0 times infinity forms. And so that means we got to push one of these guys into the denominator. So probably the safer one to go with is going to be the x squared plus x. It'll be messy, but it won't be nearly as messy as pushing down 1 over natural log of x. OK, we follow our nose. We take derivative of the top over derivative of the bottom. Derivative of the top gives me a 1 over x. Derivative of the bottom, OK, well, that's going to be a special form of the quotient rule, which just says minus sign, square the bottom, and then take the, top, take the bottom take its derivative, and then put that in the top. So we square the bottom. That's derivative is 2x plus 1. We put that in the top, and then throw in a minus sign. All right, messy, but not totally unmanageable. So I'm going to clear out everything with, let's see, I want to fix the x here. So we'll multiply by x over x. And I want to fix the x squared plus x squared in the bottom of the denominator. So I'll multiply by x squared plus x, quantity squared, top and bottom. When we clean up, we have x squared plus x squared in the top, and then minus x, 2x plus 1 in the bottom. Now note, this is just x squared times x plus 1 squared. So that's going to let me cancel off this x in the bottom. That would give us problems if we stuck 0 in. So what we're really looking at here is x times x plus 1 squared over minus 2x plus 1. So that x up on top is going to drive the whole thing to 0. And what I'll have in the bottom is just going to be the minus 2x plus 1, which goes to minus 1. So our limit is going to be 0. We're not finished. This is just the limit of the thing in the top. Our final answer is just going to be e to the 0. And then that's just going to give me a 1. Now note, with these weirdy limits, I like to check my work. So what can I do? I want to take the point 0, 0, 0, 1, stick it into here, and see what comes out. So when I do this, 
the trusty old calculator, we notice what comes out is going to be 0.9991, and I'm convinced that I did this correctly. So our limit's going to be 1. For our last case, let's consider when we get an infinity minus an infinity. If I have an infinity plus an infinity, we're fine. That's another plus infinity. If I have a minus infinity minus another infinity, that's also a minus infinity. So, and here we're talking in the sense of limits. So when there are different signs, you really can't say anything about what's going on there without doing more work. Let's take a look at an example. I have limit as x goes to 0 from the right, natural log of 1 minus x over x cubed plus 2 plus x over 2x squared. Let's take a look at what's happening here. This is roughly 1, so I'm looking at 1 over 0, which is going to be something infinite. Since we're going from the right, we'll figure out what it is. And then over here, I'm looking at 2 over 0. The x's are always positive numbers, so this is definitely going to plus infinity. On this side, the bottom is definitely going to be 0, but coming in from the positive side. So that we've got to figure out which way the top comes from. If I look at natural log of x, if I take 1 minus x, and x is a positive number that's really small, we're going to be slightly to the left of 1. So there, the y values are going to be equal to negative numbers. So this thing up here is always going to be a negative number. So this whole thing, negative number over cube of a positive number, is just going to be another negative number. But since we're dividing by 0, it's going to go to minus infinity. All right, you can just take that on faith if you don't want to do the gymnastics. I'm going to put everything over a common denominator. So it's going to be a 2x cubed. So over here, i got to multiply top and bottom by x. So that's going to make everything look like 2 natural log 1 minus x plus 2x plus x squared if I put the 2s in here also. Now when I put 0 in, we got 0 in the bottom. Natural log of 1 is 0 and 0 and 0, so I get 0 over 0. And L'Hopital's rule can be used. We do the derivative of the top and bottom. Derivative of the bottom is going to be 6x squared. Derivative of the top, okay, well, derivative of natural log just says flip it over. So I get my 1 minus x in the bottom. Derivative of the inside is going to be minus 1. Derivative of 2x is 2. Derivative of x squared is 2x. To clean this up, multiply top and bottom by 1 minus x to get rid of this guy. And so when I clean up, we're going to wind it with a minus 2 plus 2 minus 2x squared. This term here, notice, I can pull the 2 out of that. That gives me a 1 plus x, and then I have a difference of 2 squares. Or you could just multiply it out. 6 and 1 half dozen the other. So now I'm left with this. Let's take a look at this. The 2's are going to go away, so the x squareds can then go away, leaving me with a minus 2, 6, 1 minus x. If I put 0 in there, I'm just going to get myself minus 2 over 6, or a minus a third. Since a number comes out, the Hopital's rule says that's the answer for the original limit. Again, we're looking at weirder things. So I want to check this just by sticking in a really small number. If I put in 0, 0, 0, 1, I'm going to put it into this term here just because it's a little bit safer than this. Here, we know these two terms are going to go out to infinity, so i got to have a lot of precision if I want to get this thing to come back down to a third. won't be so bad if I use the second one, so I'll settle on this. When I put all my numbers in, what's going to come out is minus point. 3333. Three, three, three. So that is definitely close enough to minus one third, so I'm convinced I have the right answer.